Welcome to Athletic Definition. I'm your host, Coach Ray Z. We will be covering the latest in sports and fitness and what's trending around the world today. Today, I'll be covering taking naps. Are they good for you? Are they beneficial? Do you ever feel really tired after taking a nap? I'll let you know why. Also, we're going to be talking about Germany has a better plant-based food than the United States. King of diets, as he goes through social media, eats 100 eggs per day. Is there any sort of benefit or is that bad for your health? We'll get into that, plus a lot more, so be sure to stick around. During last week's show, I didn't have the opportunity to mention a couple stories. One of them was the passing of Judo Jean LaBelle. He's known as one of the first, if not the first, Americans to have an MMA fight in the United States. He is legendary from pro wrestling to jujitsu to judo uh, for what he's done and what he's accomplished. He was the coach to Ronda Rousey's mom who practiced judo, and he also helped train Ronda Rousey. He also was the referee when Muhammad Ali fought uh, I can't remember his name right now. Aiko, I think, the, the the famous Japanese wrestler. And so he was a ref for one of the second MMA fights in the history of the United States. I got to meet Judo Jean LaBelle when I was working the fights in the Commerce Casino. And everybody's like, better be careful. He might throw you. He's uh, known to have made Steven Seagal crap his pants when he put him to sleep. I just wanted to say... My condolences to the family. We lost the legend, Judo Jean LaBelle. The other story I didn't get to touch on last week is we just had what's called the Angeles Crest 100 Mile Endurance Race. I wanted to give a shout out to the runners that won, but instead I'm going to try and reach out to them and see if I could bring them on. It's a great race without really looking into it. From what I remember, you start somewhere, oh, I would say on the way to 15, which is maybe Kern County, I believe, freeway, and you make your way through the Los Angeles mountains and you end in Altadena. While you're doing that, you're traveling 100 miles. I know a few people have tried it, a few people who finished it, and a few people that weren't able to finish it. Looking forward to trying to bring on some guests so they could better let us know about that 100 mile race. I definitely have that on my radar as one of the races I wanna do. And moving on to the Peloton. I don't know if you have a Peloton at home or if you liked it. I know at first, at least from the Latino community, what I heard is that they didn't have any Latinos on the screen. I think that's changed now. But I think the Peloton had its heyday during the pandemic. The sales were up dramatically. And ever since then, they keep doing changes to try to bring back the Peloton. I personally don't think it's going to happen. I think you're going to have to... Who knows, because they're slashing 780 jobs, which is horrible right now during inflation for the people that are losing their job. And not only that, but they're also going to raise their prices on subscription and the bike by quite a few couple hundred dollars to try and make profit. I don't know what they did with all their profit from the couple of the years they should have maybe planned for marketing. I don't think Peloton will, will stay as modern, and I don't think it'll be a workout tool that we hear about in many years to come, but you never know. We'll see what happens. And then in Germany, which I'm looking forward to see if any of my German listeners from the podcast, you, you are my second biggest tree be behind United States that listens to me. So what I was reading is that in Germany, they have way better plant-based food over there than the United States. That Over there, Germans like vegan food, even if they're not vegan. And that overall, they're just more generally econo-conscious. So for that reason, they've cut back on their meat. They've cut back on their meat so much, pork, beef, that the average American, from the average American, they eat 121 pounds per year versus 225 by Americans. That's a lot. Me, I've tried substitutes. I'm not vegan, uh, but I'm not against it either. Over here, the meat and the substitutes, people basically, they have a backlash when anyone tries to present it. Uh, Cracker Barrel, which is known more like in the East Coast. I think there's maybe one in California now. I'm not sure. They try to introduce an impossible sausage on the breakfast menu. They had a backlash. McDonald's, I believe, discontinued their impossible or beyond meat, whichever one they served. I've tried them both. I didn't like it. At first, I was like, oh, okay, this isn't too bad. But then after, when I had the second one, 
it kind of tasted synthetic. And no matter what I did to put on it, I had a, a hamburger. And when I put some other stuff to put, you know, take the flavor away, the synthetic, it, it still didn't taste good. From what I remember learning, your body really doesn't know what to do with it. It's synthetic. Over there in Germany, they have the big vegan patty, and that one is made by Nestle. And Burger King uses a plant-based menu, but they use something called the Vegetarian Butcher. So they have different companies making their meat over there. Maybe that might be part of the reason as well, because I would rather have a black bean burger as a substitute of meat than eating a Beyond Meat or Impossible Burger. You let me know if you like that Impossible Burger and if your stomach can digest it. I'm not a big fan of it at all. And then a new study, that's the thing about everything that I'm telling you is current. So when you look up stuff, it's difficult because there's always contradiction in information. So this first study, and I'll post the articles in case you want to take a look at them on the show notes. This first study is talking about how we need to take naps and that naps are important. I'm reading the comment here. Haven't heard of that burger. Oh yeah. The, the, it's basically the patty. It's the meat that you can buy. Try it out. Let me know if you like it. I think the closest substitute and people will, will tell you that if it's healthy or not healthy to eat soy, but soy chori. So was probably like the closest that I tasted and it was pretty good, but those impossible and beyond meats, I don't like them. And they do have quite a, I think Carl's Jr. sells them like that and, uh, and a few other ones. But overall, they're just not making profit. Americans seem to love their fast food. As far as like taking a nap, they say it's helpful to recharge and that it, it's, it, it can basically help refresh your physical and cognitive uh, thinking. And overall, this article is basically saying don't make difficult decisions when you're tired, which to me is great advice. But taking a nap isn't always necessarily a good thing. And that's according to another article that I found. And this one, I believe, was just released on this past Thursday. Basically, if you're tired, uh, what it can do is it builds up byproducts in your frontal cortex of the human brain. And so by taking a nap, it can help you make better decisions and you're more clear minded. It says, that overall, for most people, there's benefits to napping. But there's also benefits as far as healing. By taking a nap, if you're sick, actually when you're sick, your body releases immune cells called chemical messengers. That They basically help you go to sleep. That way you can recover quicker. It helps your immune system. It helps rejuvenate, rejuvenate, <laughs> tongue tied there. It helps rejuvenate you. So naps are helpful overall to most people. And they have health benefits, but there's also unhealthy benefits and risks linked to naps. So there's always a positive and negative. One is I think that if you eat and go directly to sleep after, that's bad for you. And I think that some of these numbers that I'm going to tell you probably come from people that just eat, they feel tired, and they just want to go straight to sleep. Recent study of 358 people, 451 people, uh, it was high published in the Journal of Hypertension found that people who napped 12% were more likely to have developed high blood pressure and 24% of them were more likely to have a stroke. The people under 60 napping most uh, raised, they risked their, their chance of high blood pressure by 20% compared to people that don't nap. And then larger naps, meaning longer naps of an hour or more, they also have been linked to higher risk of diabetes, heart disease, and depression. And that's where I think you can, you know, they say don't eat, just like don't go swimming right after you eat. So if you do that, I like recharging too. I do at not as much as before, but I su suffered for insomnia for a long time. So that is actually one of the people they don't recommend to nap. If you suffer from insomnia, they say don't do it because your 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 brain is basically has a, like a daily quota of how much it needs to sleep. And you by you taking a nap, it's eating away at that quota. And then also it'll make it harder for you to fall asleep. Most likely, since you're already suffering from insomnia, the best thing to do is try to tire yourself out as much as possible. And that way you can 
get the complete sleep. And there is such a thing as taking a, a nap too long. It says that if you, and these were uh, by doctors and I forget who else, one of them's uh, Waters. And so the full article will be on the show notes if you want to read it. But if you nap for 30 minutes or more, your body can enter slow sleep waves, which can make you feel drowsy afterwards. If you take one Take a two-hour nap, you may feel worse than you did before. You start entering cycles of sleep that are more difficult to wake up from. So they say that the ideal nap time is between 15 to 30 minutes. That way you don't feel more tired than you did when you first took a nap, which me personally, I have actually felt that where I'm like, man, I feel more tired. And sometimes you do take uh, shorter naps and you just feel like more refreshed. If you can't fall asleep in that time, at least you got some sort of rest, or maybe you can use it for some sort of meditation. Over here in Los Angeles yesterday, there was a flash mob in Los Angeles that bombarded, rushed 7-Eleven, and there was about 100 young people who participated in it. A lot of them didn't have masks on, and I don't mean masks to cover for COVID. I mean masks to cover who they are. On some of the video, you could clearly see them. I hope they catch all of them. Once they catch a few of them, it'll per pretty much be like if you've ever seen that TV show, Another 48, dun dun. They always snitch. Everyone is, ends up snitching and they get caught. And I just think these young people here in LA, they, they need jobs, they need opportunity, and they need discipline. And they need discipline in sports by working out. Where, where are the parents at? And the reason I say that is because when you do catch citizens doing an act of kindness or doing something good, I always notice that it, they have some sort of martial arts training. A couple of weeks ago when the Filipino black belt from New York uh, in jiu-jitsu stopped the, the guy just going around and punching people. Uh, there was another black belt in jiu-jitsu at a gas station who stopped the guy robbing and harassing people. And um, these Georgia high, high school kids, they rescued a lady from being uh, trapped in a car that was going about 70 miles an hour, and it started, it started to be on fire. And they just all made the decision. They ranged from age 14 to 17, and I just wanted to give them a shout-out because... We always hear about the bad kids, about the bad kids. And yeah, some of these kids definitely need discipline. And that's why I'm like, get them involved, get them involved in something. It's bad enough for the businesses trying to survive and then they're getting looted. And I, you know, don't get me wrong. I've done a flash mob, but the flash mob I did was at Universal City Walk. And we did a flash mob with Carlton from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And we all did the Carlton and we danced. And that's the type of flash mob I took part in. Not the kind that you go and just coordinate a, a robbery of a hundred people, basically stealing things from, from the store. So the, the young kids that saved the woman from the fiery crash, uh, it is Trayvon Adams, Tyson Brown, Antoine Corey, uh, Alto Moore, Caesar Parker, and their classmate, Maisha Daniels. They helped pull out the 50 year old woman. They use their strength to pry the door open. And I, I personally feel that it's because one is they probably have good parents and two is they're involved in high school football. High school football teaches you discipline. And that's what a lot of our youth is missing right now. I bet you if those hundred people that did the flash mob for 7-Eleven were involved in some sort of martial art, some sort of boxing program, some sort of sport, they may not, I'm sure there's always going to be some bad seeds, but they may not have taken part in this and that is just from what i see overall that is my opinion and you guys let me know what you guys think on the comments be sure to do that on pretty much you can leave a comment on any social media and then the next one is a story about he calls himself the king of diets and he went on tiktok and youtube and he shows that he eats a hundred eggs per day and you see him separating the eggs from the yolk and the whites. And the reason he says he does it on his video on YouTube is because he says, you know, he's a bodybuilder. Some people say it's steroids, but to him, he's trying to put on protein. And there was all kinds of comments on the feed. For example, Arnold Schwarzenegger used to eat the whole egg. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger did have two heart, two heart attacks. 
he had two surgeries for a heart attack. And so they asked the dietitian, besides everything, well, let me tell you the reason why he says he does it. He says that eating chicken, which if you're a bodybuilder and you're trying to put on size, you're always eating a lot continuously. A lot of chicken, a lot of chicken with no seasoning, no flavor. So he says that makes him feel bloated, that he feels like he looks like he's pregnant, six months pregnant. He eats eggs because that makes him feel not bloated and he can still work out and look good. So they asked the dietitian about that, if it's, if it's healthy or not. And she said that it could be signs that he has some sort of relation, like disorder with relationship with food or with his body. It could also be a sign that he's basically not getting enough food, uh, healthy food. Uh, it, and it could stem from food phobias or superstitions because you're just eating too much of one thing. And really it should be like a good variety. Well, what the dietitian recommends is what a lot of the countries that you hear are living longer are doing. And it's like 75% of your plate is a diverse plant-based food, veggies, fruits, nuts, and beans. And then with a smaller portion of it, meat, I've heard even in other countries, they'll take like a steak and divide it between, let's say five people. And here we all have individual steaks. And then the second, I would definitely wouldn't eat 100 eggs. I do love eggs, but I don't think that that's healthy. And you can get into cholesterol and other things. But to me, that's I, I like a variety of food. And I've never really, when I was younger, I think I did want to be a bodybuilder. But then I realized they're not very mobile. And I kind of gave that up quickly. I, I'd rather be strong than look strong. And usually when you are strong, you end up looking it. You just may not be as as much as you see the guys on muscle fitness or something like that. This last one is ice cream is better for you than multi-grain bagel, a new study suggests. And so basically this um, university, Tufts from Massachusetts, did a recent study and they ranked it from one to 100, 100 being the healthier food. And it said that a study of ice cream cone with nuts and chocolate ice cream came in at 37, while a multigrain bagel with raisins received a 19. And saltine crackers, I might have said that opposite, the, the higher. And saltine crackers came in at a 7. Frito chips came in at 55, whole grain frozen French toast, Scored a 35, non-fat cappuccino was ranked 69. And then according to the study, the, uh, the healthiest meat is seafood with an average of 67, followed by poultry, beef with average scores of 42.6 and 24 respectively. Overall, I think that we all need to be careful when we go to the store and purchase our healthier food. If you've, I'm not a big fan of cereal, but I will eat it here and there. When you look at the healthy cereal versus just the regular cereal, sometimes the healthy, what they claim is healthy, has more sugar in it than like a, a Frosted Flakes, which has a lot of sugar. Unfortunately, we do have to compare and look at labels and not only that, but serving sizes because a serving size can be misleading depending on who it is that's uh, putting it out there. But yeah, a lot of the healthy stuff and then some of the things that they put in it, chemicals, the natural sweeteners may be worse for you than the actual eating the, the sugar. I do believe it's all about balance. It's really up to you to decide. But I think that the more we know about it, the more we stay up to date with different news coming out about health and fitness and food. It's important for us to know because I think most of us know that we should eat more veggies and cut out soda. And then beyond that, we're, we're pretty lost at what to do. And I understand I'm, I'm a coach. I train information on food. It's just difficult to sometimes know really what you're eating. Almost everything's processed. Everything that says organic, it may not be organic. Anything that says wild fed or, or roam free doesn't mean that they're actually roaming free. A lot of deceptive, uh, advertising. <laughs> And that's not really good for anybody except for the people making the money. If anybody would like to come up and just touch uh, on any of the following topics that I mentioned, you're more than welcome to. If not, 
Next Friday, I'm going to be having my show in Spanish. I'll be having Mountain Climber from Mexico. And then later on that day, I will be having a journeyman uh, who's an Ironman. He lost a lot of weight. I think he might have even had a heart attack. And now he's an Ironman. Great story. You'll definitely want to tune in for that one. That'll be, I think, at 3. And then later on, a special Friday night edition of Drunks, uh, which we will have a couple guests. And we will be testing out the Brewery X, which is from Anaheim, California. And you can pretty much pick that up anywhere and join us if you'd like. I have Elizabeth coming up. And Elizabeth, hi. hi. Just to know, would you like video or are you okay with audio? Um, I'm okay with audio at the moment. Uh, okay. Because I'm doing something. Oh, no problem. But, Welcome. But hey, uh, how are you? You know, happy Friday. Um, you know, I was listening to what you were saying. You know, I do recharge. I do take naps myself. And so, and it's good, um, you know, and, um, you know, after, after a good recharge, you know, you get to like, for me personally, I get to finish, you know, some chores that I, you know, or anything, um, that I have pending. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's really good to, to do that as far as, uh, you know, eating, eating healthy. I know some quote unquote healthy foods, you know, they do have more sugar or more sodium a few years back because of my mom, I learned to look at that, like at the labels more carefully, you know, for sugar and sodium. So yes, you know, I, I use other types of, uh, of salt. I don't use the regular salt. You know, I use more of the sea salt or, you know, the Himalayan salt. Um, and so, yeah, a, a lot of these like food habits, you know, that they changed. So I just wanted to share that. And, you know, thank you for sharing this, um, you know, and give us this information. So it's good to kind of refresh our minds or remind us, you know, that um, we, we need to to, to uh, focus on these things, you know, and, and, and like put or put more attention to them. Yeah, and thank you for coming up here. I know a lot of people don't like to be reminded of this on Friday. They're thinking more party, which I understand. And I want to ask you, Elizabeth, when you do take a nap, do you find it harder to go to sleep that that same night you know what sometimes i do if i take the nap late you know um but if, if i take it like in like midday then you know it's not harder but uh, sometimes not, not not all the time you know sometimes if i take a, a, a nap at, at four i mean of course i don't wake up at eight you know it's like maybe like a half hour or so or maybe i, I like i like to put my alarm and so, but when I don't, I mean, you know, si se me pasa and, and, you know, at night it's like a little, just a little bit harder for me to, you know, have that good night's sleep. But, you know, when I'm at home, what I do is I drink either, you know, chamomile tea or the hierba buena, you know, which that kind of helps me like to just relax and go back to sleep. Yeah, for some reason, and I think it does have to do with how long you nap. I Sometimes I could go to sleep and sometimes I can't. So I, I have started putting on an alarm when I do take a nap because I don't want to sleep too long. I just want to kind of get like a quick refresh. That way I'm not feeling like, oh, I shouldn't make a tough decision or any sort of decision. Your brain just kind of, from what I was reading, wants to go into relax mode. So I'd rather do something that doesn't have to think. It's just become automatic for it which could be, depending on the person, it could be like knitting where you don't think about it. It's just like automatic. And that way I can still take a nap and then be able to sleep at night. Yeah, you know, one thing that I do though, and uh, you know, in the evening is like, I go for a jog, you know, I go jogging. Um, I used to do it like in the mornings when my girls were on vacation and not much of a, at night. There was a time because of things that were happening during nighttime. But, you know, now it's like, you know, I have uh, go jogging, you know, when I'm at home, um, you know, and uh, and that kind of helps me, you know, to sleep better. So, yeah, it, it's, so, it's so me I do that and it's so refreshing. Uh, yes, I, I like it, although there's some people who can't nap at all, and I'm sure there's, I don't know what the percentage is, but I'm sure there is. I know my mom, no matter what, she cannot take a nap, so I'm sure there's other people out there like that, and 
it, it's kind of too bad because I, I do enjoy napping. I call them power naps. That way I sound like I'm being productive. Yes. <laughs> well, I wanted to uh, thank you so much for joining me. I will be back. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'll have another show on Tuesday, and that's going to be in Spanish as well. And that I'm going to have Eddie Powers, who is from Boston, Massachusetts, and he's the leader of Chelsea Run Club. He started that because he was drinking and smoking and looked at himself in the mirror and he wasn't happy so he started running since then he's lost weight and he wants to give back to the community so he started this run club you can hear that story this tuesday on el mundo de fitness i do sporadic shows so the only way to know is to be sure to join fireside click on my profile follow me that way you get an alert and everyone enjoy their weekend once again elizabeth thank you so much for joining me and coming up here i appreciate it Until next time, this has been Coach Ray Z, Athletic Definition, and I'm out.